Welcome to CES 2014. I'm Lamor Schaffin here for RCR Wireless, and I'm here with Nakul Dugal from Qualcomm. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. So what are you doing here at CES this year? I run the product portfolio for automotive and machine to machine in terms of everything within our chipset division. Uh, we've been uh, focused this year especially on automotive and automotive infotainment. We've announced a new portfolio of chipsets, the Snapdragon S602A, which is targeting infotainment for next, gen next generation vehicles. Okay, and now why the Snapdragon? Snapdragon was very exciting. I think last year is when it first launched. Um, all right, you remind me when it first launched, but it was very exciting and we've been seeing how powerful it was. I remember I was seeing 3D audio with it last year, multi-processing. I was loving the demos that you were showing last year. So how is that translating into automotive? You know, so we've had a very long uh, history with automotive. We've been, uh, we've been powering telematic systems, modems and cars for a long time. OnStar has been a customer of Qualcomm's for several generations. What we've started to see over the last couple of years is the next generation vehicle is going to be powered by LTE. It's going to be a 4G modem, at least 100 megabits per second, and it's driving for a variety of different technologies that come into the car. Snapdragon is the term for our application processor SOC. So we use Snapdragon for our smartphone portfolio from the lowest tier all the way to the most premium. And Snapdragon is really a complete solution. So what it does is it takes the application processor, and in the case of S602A, it's a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor. It takes graphics, so we have our Adreno 320 graphics processor. It has a very capable DSP for, for voice recognition, for audio processing. And then it has a variety of surround chipsets. So we have Wi-Fi, we have Bluetooth, we have navigation functionality, and we have a modem. So what we basically built is, you know, if you were to think of the car as a smartphone on, on wheels, you take Snapdragon, you take LTE, you put all of it together, and that's the smartphone on wheels. But we don't stop there. What we try to do is to be able to think about what is a smartphone on, on wheels and how is it different from a typical smartphone. Now, a car is obviously a very different vehicle. The biggest difference, if you want to think about how a vehicle works, is you have multiple people interacting with the vehicle. So you have the driver, you have a screen in the rear, which has a passenger. They have completely independent interaction, which is not something that we have done in our traditional business. What we have focused on from a software perspective is what needs to change in our architecture for us to be able to actually make that happen. So we have a number of demonstrations at CES where we show how we are taking Snapdragon 602A and powering the next generation infotainment systems. Okay, so basically what Snapdragon is going to allow is for the the kid in the back, there are two kids in the back, let's be blunt, one of them is watching a cartoon, one's in a little older, they're watching a video, or they may be playing a video game, let's say, and then you've got mom and she's looking at the directions and dad is trying to do another navigation thing, or mom is reading a book or wanting to listen to the music, so, it. and it has to all happen simultaneously. You got it. So what we are demonstrating that we can show to you and uh, 602A is capable of three simultaneous displays. We are showing two. The driver's side display is focused on what you might expect, vehicle information, tire pressure, fuel economy, etc., navigation, uh, audio streaming, so you don't want to get to video. But then there is the ability to be able to actually have content that can only be watched in the rear seat, but is controlled from the front seat. So we actually have a pretty slick demo where we start, so we select the video from the front screen and we flick it off to the rear screen and it starts playing automatically in the rear screen. We are showing gaming in the rear screen. So we have console quality gaming with the joystick completely independently managed in the rear screen while the driver is navigating. Now how about from a, a driver's safety perspective, and I don't mean just driving, I mean actually information, distractions, but also information coming from off the highway, the sensors that are going on with the car. How is Snapdragon interfacing with all of that? You know, excellent question. So one of the reasons why we started to see modems into vehicles, so the initial use cases were you know, safety and security. If your airbag goes off, you want to be able to call a first responder if you can't reach them. That whole suite of services has expanded into a completely different variety. The car is connected to the cloud. So for instance, real-time information, real-time traffic information, this is something that's offered in a variety of different countries. We heard at CES uh, yesterday that uh, automakers are now partnering with real-time traffic service providers to be able to get three-minute updates 
on real-time traffic information. So that's all coming in from the modem in real time. What we're doing is taking that information, connecting it to our navigation systems, and now overlaying that information. So you really have a connected experience for the driver that is distraction proof. You're not looking at your cell phone to figure out where the traffic jam is. You can actually get inside your car while the air seat is completely independently managed. So are you going to form a partnership with Wave and see if you can get their nav system into your combined with your Snapdragon? You know, so uh, yeah, I mean, we are talking to a number of different players. Waze, incidentally, uh, was a Qualcomm Ventures company. So we did have a relationship with Waze. Uh, but we're basically working with, you know, we're working with Google. We're working with the entire ecosystem in terms of selecting the right partners for the right types of pieces. And this is something that happens as a collaboration because Qualcomm is a silicon provider. We are building complex systems, but clearly this is something that is not necessarily just for one country. I mean, a vehicle manufacturer has to be able to do this globally. So you have to be able to think about solving the problem at a global scale, and that's obviously a, you know, something that requires a very complex ecosystem to come together. Because right. actually, let's say, um, not everyone has LTE. Um, yet and so when you're manufacturing these chips and you're looking at that global marketplace what do you what do you need to do or do you need to do anything to configure Snapdragon accordingly yeah so LT is actually in going through a very interesting uh, transition as well. Uh, China Mobile announced in October that they will be deploying TDLT. They already have early systems up. We are starting to see LT pretty much get deployed globally. So North America is already done, Japan and Korea are done, China is on that path, and then some advanced markets in Europe have started to go down that path. We are seeing every new system that we start to see uh, a request for a modem is going to be an LT system. That is already happening. We have a pretty advanced, we are on a fourth generation of LT modems. Uh, we have announced uh, the MDM 9X30, which is our uh, second generation modem where we implement a technology called the RF360. And what we try to do is to be able to take the complexity of technology like LT. So if you compare, for instance, LT to GSM, and GSM came out, it had four bands. UMTS came out, it had five or six bands maximum. LT, I think, is over 45 bands today. So one of the key areas of innovation that Qualcomm is focused on is how do you reduce the complexity of the RF bands? And we've done that by basically introducing a technology called the RF360 that, if you would like, can actually get you down to a single SKU. So if you think about the problem statement for, let's say, a manufacturer like Audi, who works with a certain carrier in the U.S., needs to have a different relationship in 27 different countries in Europe, goes to China, three different operators there, Japan, Korea, and everybody's LTE configurations are different. Well, they're not looking to have seven different hardware SKUs. That's where we come in, that's where we go solve their problems. So you make it easier, and it was easier and scalable for them, basically, exactly. and less cost. Exactly. Okay. So if you're looking at automotive going forward, I don't know, five, 10 years, what would you say is coming down the pike? You know, I think the automotive space is very interesting because if you think about the Internet of Things, you, I mean, you, you cover the Internet of Things, the, the car is this very interesting node on the Internet where uh, you have a consumer aspect to it because there are people in the car. You have multiple people in the car. The car is also a machine, so it needs to be able to talk back to base independently. You need to be able to control the car remotely. And then there is the whole uh, transition towards autonomous vehicles which will all be driven by communication. So I think the vehicle is basically going to be, become this central point of innovation for the industry where a variety of different technologies that start off in the mobile space get brought in into the vehicle. And we are starting off with things like connectivity and infotainment, but this is going to start to move very quickly towards technologies that will actually be used to drive the car and control the vehicle. So. Not cool. Thank you so much. It was very informative. Greatly appreciate it. Very pleasure. Uh, great pleasure to meet you, Lemar. And thank you for joining us here at CS 2014. Stay tuned for more from the show floor.